everyone in the last instructional video of the week i'll go over the notes of study island for uh number and quantity uh which deals with uh quantities and units lesson so as i told you before uh study island examples are a little higher rigor than ixls so that's why i first do the ixls uh for the first half of the week and then in the second half of the week, you're going to deal with study island, uh, which requires more legal, more rigor, a little more involvement and thinking. So here's the first example. So uh, what they start the lesson with is units can be used as a way to understand and guide the solution of multi-step problems. So the first example in the notes is a website showed the following formula for the volume of a cylinder. Volume equals pi times r times h. So looking at this formula, let me just give you a little brief background. Pi is just a number. It doesn't have any unit. It's just a number like 5 or 7. Numbers don't have any units. Uh, r is the radius. When we express a radius of something uh, like a circle, uh, we use expressions such as 5 inches three centimeters so as you see i just pronounce I, I say a number and then it's unit so it does have a unit so r has a unit uh h stands for the height uh and then when we give examples of heights we use expressions such as five feet or 32 inches those kind of numbers and units so in here uh, the letters that have units are, let me change the color, radius and h, or height. So let me just expand this. The volume equals pi. It doesn't have any unit, but radius is going to have a unit. We don't know what that r is, but we know it will have a unit. Let's say, like, five units, five centimeters. So that centimeter would be my unit. Uh, and then times the height would have its unit as well. So looking at this, how many units do you see? I'm only seeing like two of them. One is here and then the other one is here. Now let's read the rest of the question. Janet had never seen this formula before, but she knew that there was a typographical error, and the question is, how did she know there was an error? So, I want to show you something, guys, but remember how many units did we have in this formula? We have two units, right? Just keep that in mind because it's going to be gone in a second. So, we have two units in here. That means we have a two-dimensional quantity. Now, my question is, how many dimension does volume have? Okay. So, volume is three dimensional quantity because we have, like, we have the base. We have, the, we have the base area, which is the uh, product of two dimensions, such as length times width. Let's say you have a rectangle in the base, okay? Its area would be length times width. You're multiplying two units with their numbers if you have a rectangle on the ground. And then, let's say it's a prism. It, it, it has its height as well. And then you're multiplying these two, uh, length and width, by the height that's your third dimension so same thing applies uh, to cylinder or any other three-dimensional figure if we are able to talk about volume that means we are talking about three-dimensional quantity but looking at this example here it didn't have three dimensions it had only two so that's the problem since this formula has only two dimensions or uh, two units uh, it's not a cubic unit, it is square units. Uh, 
that would be the problem with this formula. It's a conceptual thing. It's not like something that you can come up with on your own easily. But in the long run, you will be able to figure this out on your own. Okay, moving on to the next example. Okay. Example 2, the distance, which is D. So this is good because uh, it tells me what letter is what, actually. So I like these sort of questions. Distance and D is the same thing. When I see a distance in my question, like 5 kilometers, 20 miles, I plug it in for D. An object travels is represented by the following equation, where R is the rate, so R is my rate, I don't know what rate it is, but rate means a number divided by another number, which the object is traveling, and T is the time. So I have three letters with their definitions. And then if you look at the formula, there are only three letters, three variables in here. So I know D is the distance, R is the rate, and then T is the time. Now let's read the question. How long will it take? What is this about? Is this about distance, rate, or time? I really hope that you see that it is about time, right? It says how long it'll take. An object traveling at 45 miles per hour. So the problem with many of my students or many of the high schoolers will do when they read this question is reading it the wrong way. So if you stop reading the second you see this 45 miles, you're going to start thinking that this is the distance. But if you continue reading, it says per hour. Per is about rates. So sometimes you divide, sometimes you multiply when you see the word per. So again, this is your rate because it doesn't just say 45 miles. It says 45 miles for every hour. That's your rate. And then the last uh, quantity I have is 1125 miles. This is the D. Now all I have to do is plugging in the two numbers that are given. The green and blue are given. The pink one is the unknown. That's what I need to figure out. Now I'll drop the formula down here. Uh, so D is the blue. I'm rewriting the formula. Okay. Let, let me just bring down the whole formula over here first. D equals RT. So the blue expression is the distance, which is 1125. I will bring down the equal. The rate is the green expression that I figured out, which is 45. Oops, let's change the color. Okay, the green is 45. That's my rate. And then times T. That's the pink part of the equation that is unknown. I need to figure this out. So that means T should be all by itself, whether it's the left side or right side, but it should be all by itself. What do you see when you look at the side that has T? So let's start with this. What side do you see the T on? Is it on the right side of the equation or the left side of the equation? Here are the sides. Equation decide what your sides are. Whatever you have on the left side of the equation is the left side. And what you have on the right side is on the right side. That's how it works. So to get the T by itself, what do we do? What do we need to get rid of? So the 45 is the extra stuff sitting next to T. I need to get rid of that one, that, that 45. So the T is by itself. But how do I do that? What operation do I have? What's the thing between 45 and T? It's multiplied, right? So to do the inverse operation of multiplication, I need to divide. Divide by what? I need to divide everything by 45. But not just the right side, it should be also the left side. So when you do this, the inverse operations are going to cancel each other. Multiplication and division with the same number will be gone. The T is on the right side. Bring down the equal and divide the numbers on the left. What is 1125 divided by 45? It's 25. So the number of time, the, the amount of time that I need would be 25. Day or like weeks, I don't, I, I didn't pay attention to the unit. So let's just read the answer. Therefore, it'll take 24, 25 hours. So that would be uh, the answer, 25. Okay, let's check the next example. Okay, 
this one is a good example that I really like because it, it makes me think a lot other than just dividing and multiplying. If you can connect the dots when you read a question uh, that requires critical thinking skills, you need to understand what you're reading. That's comprehension. Uh, if you are able to comprehend what you read, you're going to have a big advantage in Algebra 1. So, especially with the word problems. Let's read the question. Samantha weighs 140 pounds. In order to maintain her weight, she must consume 15 calories a day per pound of body weight. For every pound in her body, she needs to consume 15 calories. But how, how, many cal uh, how many pounds does she have in her body? It's 140 pounds, right? It's given in the first sentence, it is 140 pounds. But, and for every single one of these pounds, she needs to consume 15 calories. In total, let me just put this on the side because I don't know if I'm going to need this or not. Uh, for every pound, she's going to need to consume 15 calories. And she has 140 pounds. Uh, in total, this would be 2100 calories. That's the total calorie that she needs to consume. Total calories need to be consumed. In order to maintain her weight, that's that's why, by the way, it's not just for no reason. So let's read the second sentence. Okay, it says if she eats five small meals a day, how many calories per meal should she consume? Okay, uh, so this is the total amount, and she eats five meals, right? So, and the question is how many calories she need to consume per meal? In total, there are five meals, and she needs to consume 2,100 calories in a day. And for every meal, this would be my answer, 420 calories per meal. She needs to consume that amount. So that would be my answer. If you go through this solution, by the way, here, it includes the units as well. So that's why it gets confusing. So I try to explain it in a simpler way uh, that you can understand instead of just dealing with all those complicated units all together. So I hope it helps. Now let's see if there's any other example. I didn't check what we have on the second page, so I'm going to pause the video and see what that one is. Hello everyone. Uh, in this part of the video, uh, we are going to talk about significant digits. So uh, there are a, there is a set of rules when it comes to significant digits. In this video, I really don't want to read this blue box because I know that no one is going to care. Instead, uh, I'm going to show you the two examples that I have in here uh, and go from there. So if you need more additional help with these, which I believe you might need, uh, I'll try to utilize the tutoring hours or one-on-one -on -one sessions because that would be a better time other than me just explaining what that is in this video and considering that it has already been 13 minutes I know you're not gonna like it okay so the first example about significant digits that I have I'll try to explain the concept behind it as well by the way Stephanie measured the length of her bedroom she discovered that her measurement had a margin of error of 0 0.005 feet so, which of the following could be the measured length of her bedroom? So, if you have the margin of error, the first thing you need to do, again, if the margin of error is given, first thing is multiplying that number by 2. So, 0, 0, 5 times 2 is going to give you uh, 0 point, let me see, 0, 1. Yeah. So, let's see what this tells us. This, the last number in this decimal is in the hundredths place so that's the light le the, the last significant number in my uh, question so the place value of that one is hundredth so which of the following could be the measured length of her bedroom the answer, the number that has the last number in the hundredths place is going to be my answer. So 
this is ones and this is tens and again ones tens and this one here is tenths so this is not my answer because I don't see any number in the hundreds place which means those numbers are like this 105.12 that's 2 is in the hundreds place or 0 0.17 7 is in the hundreds place uh, 1.3 this is the tenths this is the hundreds place so I think you get the point so that's the number that, that I'm looking for that kind of a number so 12.35 5 is the last number in this answer and its point value is the hundredths so that would be my answer this one is the thousandths so the you would when you have the margin of error you would multiply it by 2 and the last number would tell you the last significant value in your answer okay so moving on to the next example okay this one is about Melissa is making cookies according to a recipe. She pours sugar into a measuring cup that has increments of 0.25 C or cup. Which of the following could be the volume of the sugar with the correct amount, correct number of significant digits? So, uh, no matter the actual volume of sugar inside that cup, uh, the ideas that she's going to have are going to be like, 0. Point, let me just turn the pen on 0. 0.25 just multiply this by 2 0. 0.50 multiply the first number by 3 0. 0.75 multiply it by 4 1.00 0, and so on so this is the only thing that she's going to see according to the cup measurements but if she pours just a little just a little more then these numbers, like if it is between, let's say the actual volume is 0 0.27. Okay, let's say this is the actual volume of the sugar. Or, let me just make it a little interesting, a little more interesting. Uh, let's say the actual volume is 0 0.257. Okay, she's not going to realize this no matter what the actual this like this small difference is not going to be visible when you when she looks at the cup increments because all the numbers that she's going to see are going to be these ones okay so the question is which of the following could be the actual value okay if any of the answers have has this many numbers of significant digits that's going to be my answer so 0 0.7 is not going to be my answer. I need one more digit than this. 0 0.75? No, this is going to be on the cup. It's not, it cannot be the exact volume of the sugar. But this right here can be the exact volume of the sugar because it has uh, one more digit than the increments that she's kind of uncertain of. So that, that's why the C would be the answer. Let's have one more example. Okay, here's the last example of Study Island. Uh, a television manufacturer is evaluating the overall product quality of its televisions, which measure provides the best information to the manufacturer. So these sort of questions doesn't require any math or anything, it just requires you to think. So, uh, what do you think? Like, let's, let's just go over the answers, okay? Televisions repaired per thousand sold. This makes sense to me, but I still want to see the other answers so that I can see if there's any other answer that makes more sense. Televisions repaired per year. Here's the problem with this. Let's say uh, the manufacturer had a high quality in 2019 and then the product quality went down in 2020. So in one year, uh, there could be more repairs than the other. So we couldn't like make any final decisions based on the year, but maybe like the overall quality changed. So this wouldn't be a right uh, 
way to measure the quality. Televisions repaired per customer. This is not a good way because let's say I'm a good customer and I take care of my electronics and then like like I'm a great customer let's say that okay and then I have no repair history at all and then if they pick me and then that's 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 gonna give a wrong message versus another customer who messes up whatever they have uh, that wouldn't be a good way as well like or the numbers wouldn't even like uh, the numbers would not release uh, any significant information the, the numbers of the number of repairs per customer would be either one or zero it would change probably between zero and one what kind of decision can you make looking at that sort of a number like 0 0.216 uh, repair per customer so that's not a good like uh, way to evaluate this measurement so the last one is televisions repaired per year per store so this this is too detailed we don't want to have that sort of a detail in order to decide the overall product quality of the televisions in general. However, tele televisions repaired per thousand sold is going to be more accurate. It's going to give me a better uh, understanding of the quality of the products. So, uh, after watching this video, try to do the uh, blue ribbon assignment, guys. That's uh, today's assignment. Uh, you'll have 10 questions. The goal is getting 7 out of 10. That way, you'll get the blue ribbon. Uh, if you cannot get the blue ribbon in your first try and remember this is not something that you want to guess and try to get the seven uh, because if you do so I will see like the number of your attempts on my screen like if you try this like 10 times in 15 minutes or like in even like two hours uh, you're not gonna get any grade for that please don't do that I don't want you to just guess the answers because every time you retake it you're gonna end up with different questions that's one thing and also it's not going to look uh on my end like looking at your scores and the number of attempts you have uh make sure it makes sense please and every time you submit an answer it'll tell you whether you get it right or wrong if you go through the solution step by step and take notes the next time you have a similar question or maybe even the same question because it can happen uh, you will have a better chance to get that question right so please when you make a question wrong read the solution take short notes uh, and then if you want to retake it later then you will have a better chance but if you just uh, if you're just gonna guess I don't think you'll get like that 7 out of 10 uh, in, on study island it's not gonna happen as much as I excels okay so thanks for watching guys I really appreciate your time if you took the time to watch this video till the end uh, I hope that you can get that 7 out of 10 if not don't worry about it we can figure it out uh, in a tutoring session reach me out if you wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, we can see what we can do uh, and I will see you in, in another video have a good day